to Prepared Wander, doing a little uh, kitchen tabletop review for you tonight, and I'm with my good buddy Z, and we have been friends for quite a long time. Uh, we both served on a search and rescue team, several search and rescue teams together, Yeah, and uh, have spent numerous times out camping, hiking, hunting, fishing, doing all that good stuff, and he is a wealth of information. Former Army, uh, search and rescue, uh, paramedic, firefighter, police officer, all that good stuff. So he has a lot of information and knowledge, and I trust his knowledge, and I've learned a lot from him. So what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to go through um, my first line uh, survival kit that I would carry in my BDU pocket. And then what he's going to do is he's going to go through a survival kit that he put together. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit more long term, but also a kit that could actually be carried in a pack, or on your belt. So I'm going to go through that together, go through all the components, and we're each going to talk about our kits. And that way, you guys can kind of see a, a comparison and contra a, a compare and contrast of the two different kits and see if there are different ideas that maybe you can apply to when you're building your survival kit. So stick around. It's going to be a good video. All right. So this is my kit. Now, First thing you're going to ask is what this pouch is, and unfortunately, you cannot get these anymore. These are not; these are no longer made. Um, it's from a small manufacturer, custom jobs that he was doing uh, a while back ago in the day, and they are no longer made. So they're, <clears throat> they're I haven't found anything that's um, similar to this. I mean, there's different kits that are uh, close to it, these types of packs, but nothing quite like this and why I love this thing is because the simplicity of it there's no zippers so there's nothing to worry about breaking um, it is specifically designed to fit into a BDU pocket or a jacket pocket <clears throat> and my whole thought process on this particular kit is that this is really is about as bare minimum as I'd want to go on a survival kit and this is something that's going to be on my person um, as my first line. Um, of course, I would want to have a pack or other gear with me, but if it really came down to where I, I, I lose that stuff, at least I have this and there's some basics in here that could make my survivability in the woods at least somewhat comfortable and um, maybe get me eventually to rescue. So what's awesome about this thing is, like I said, no zipper. You just move this elastic band and then this thing opens up and now you have all the contents laid out in front of you so it's very easy to find what you need and to access it <clears throat> which is i think a bonus because of course with a lot of different kits um, sometimes it's just stuff jammed into every nook and cranny and you have to dig this makes it a little bit easier at least um, operating out of and of course, if you're in some type of situation, um, there's a good possibility that you are impaired in some way, either uh, physically, um, you may be cold, wet, and tired, so your mind is kind of foggy. So these kind of things are easy to get to um, when you're in that kind of condition. So first thing first, we have this clear pocket up here. And in here we've got some, these are from a company called Black and White Firestarter. These are just a petroleum based uh, cotton ball type thing. Uh, really great for starting a fire very quickly. And here I have a small uh, first aid kit, just band-aids, alcohol prep pads, some burn cream, stuff like that. Um, there is uh, a splint remover, just, a, just the bare minimum of what you need, uh, kind of a boo kit. And here's my water purification, which is really important. And I've got, of course, water purification tablets. And I think, if I remember correctly, these are the, the Catadine or Catadine. I forget how you pronounce that. These are their tablets. These are pretty readily available on the market. And then <clears throat> these are, and if you've not seen these before, these are called Whirl Bags. And what's nice about these is that you can open these up. <clears throat> they have a gusseted bottom, so they will stand up. And you can fill these with your contaminated water, 
drop one of those tablets in here and then roll this and seal it with this these little foldovers and this will seal the bag and it will contain that water and now you can put this this bag into your pocket uh, continue walking and then after the, the prescribed amount of time open this up and actually drink from it so now you don't have to boil water um, you can collect and filter water and, and keep moving, um, which may be important in your situation. So these are awesome. I think you could actually probably find these on Amazon. I know a lot of supply stores, medical supply stores will carry these as well. So these are a great item to have. Very what compact. What size those, Linda? That's a good question. You had to ask that. <laughs> um... I don't know off the top of my head, but I will look them up and I will put something down in the description below because that is a good question that because you definitely want the right size. If you get too small of a bag and then you put the tablet in, it's uh, it's better to have the correct size uh, for the tablet. So um, I'll figure that out and we'll put that in the description below. Um, <clears throat> light source. This is just a... Uh, a cheap little pen light, but it's pretty bright. And it has, of course, a diffuser on it. Did I blind you with that? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> uh, it's got a diffuser on it. <clears throat> and that diffuser actually glows in the dark. So after you use it, you can still see it. Even with a diffuser, that's really bright. Yeah, and, and the diffuser, of course, is so you don't blind your buddy or yourself. But also it's great for... Uh, map reading uh, where you don't need as much light, much bright light. And then if you want to actually navigate the terrain, then you can take the diffuser off and, and use it that way. So it gives you a couple options. Be good um, for area light too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like inside of a shelter, right? Yeah. You can hang that <clears throat> with that clip from, a, from some cordage and you'd be able to do that. And I believe this is a triple A flashlight. So it is a commonly found and used battery, which I think is important on a lot of these kits is that you use, you know, for battery operated stuff is finding batteries that you can actually find at gas stations, in people's homes, whatever. Um, you wanna have something that's easily, uh, readily available. Moving down here, uh, <clears throat> this, this bag has a nice uh, elastic system to tie down stuff. And it's got, of course, this, um, this plastic uh, loop right here. And this is great for dummy cording everything to it. So, not, so if you do dump this, not everything falls out. Of course, I've got a whistle for signaling, butane lighter. Always have multiple butane lighters in all my kits, no matter what size. Ferro rod, and then this item is probably one of the handiest fire making items uh, you can have. It really is. And this is the fire fire bellows, mm -hmm. and this will get a marginal fire, roaring hot, super fast, um, with very little effort. So, and if you're not familiar with these, it's basically you're putting the small end towards the fire that you're trying to start and the big end goes in your mouth and you're blowing into it and what it's doing it's concentrating the air that you're blowing into a very concentrated strong fine area and that will take that marginal tinder <clears throat> or uh, if it's something smoldering like uh, a piece of char material that you, you're trying to get going you can blow that into a flame very quickly with this so these are worth their weight in gold and they are in most all of my fire kits so it's a great item to have this <clears throat> is a match safe and it has a rubber gasket so it is waterproof and this is long enough that will hold the the large size uko uh matches and these matches of course you can get at walmart um, and other retailers but they this size uh case will actually fit those and the other great feature about this is is that it actually has a decent 
button compass. So many button compasses that you see in the pre-made survival kits are very cheap Chinese crap, and you do not want to depend on those. This is an actual liquid-filled compass. Um, I've tested this against my larger compass, my Silver Ranger. It's very accurate, so it's something I can depend on. Now in this pocket, of course I've got some Gorilla Tape on a card. So I've got a means of repairing stuff and also using that for first aid and fire starting as well. Another little product that I like to carry, this is Live Fire. I've done a video on this before. Um, it's really kind of an interesting product is that the, so the fire starting material uh, is inside this tin. You can spark this with your ferro rod or hit it with a match or whatever. This is going to start very easily. And then what you do is you're putting this under uh, your brush, uh, your sticks, whatever you're, you're trying to start. And that will get it going. And then when you're done, you just simply close it up. It puts it out and then you can reuse it. So there's m many, many uses out of this. It's going to last you a very long time. Uh, of course, a Fresno lens, also for starting fire, also for good for removing splinters and ticks and things like that. Here I have a sharpening steel from Buck. This is double-sided. One side is uh, kind of a medium grit and the other is like an extra fine. So that's a diamond coated plate. So that will sharpen a variety of steels and knife sizes. And the final thing I have is a wire saw. <clears throat> and we'll open this up because I want you guys to see this. Because this uh, is not the typical wire saw that you find in the pre-made cheap survival kits. Most of those are Chinese junk. Um, they do not have much tooth to them and they will break very easily. This is actually a military issue wire saw. And the big difference is, is this thing, if you were to touch this, this is actually sharp. Um, and it will not break as easy. And of course it has the cords on the end, so it makes it easier. If you want to use it by hand, you can. Of course there's a proper method of doing that. <clears throat> or if you want to use this on a bow drill, or uh, excuse me, a bow uh, piece of bowed piece of wood. You can actually fashion one in the field. Now, if you're looking for these in particular, in this particular model, these come from a company called Five Call Survival Supply, and they're actually um, a partner with with my channel. Uh, I've been working with those guys for quite a while. They send me some cool gear, and uh, they have probably some of the the most uh, well made. Um, survival equipment out on the web. A lot of the, the survival companies who say that they're selling survival gear just sell a lot of crap. So these guys actually go out and test their stuff. Uh, they send their stuff to testers um, and everything they sell is quality. There's not one piece of junk on their website. So Five Call Survival Supply, there'll be a link down below. You can check those guys out, support them, and that helps support the channel. So that's it, that's my basic kit. Now, of course, there are many things that uh, this kit lacks. Um, uh, one thing is cordage, and I think I, what I'm gonna try to do is maybe work in some micro cordage into this. Um, I think also maybe a small uh, fishing kit would be a good add-on. That uh, There's still room in here that I can add some more stuff, but the whole idea behind this is that this is lightweight, it is small that fits into a pocket, but it is not one of those tiny little Altoids tin kits that everybody tries to get by with that really serve not much of a purpose in my mind. When you can move to a size of this, uh, you're going to get much better stuff and much more usable stuff. So <clears throat> let me ask you before you get into this, what is the intent or the purpose of this particular kit that you built? This kit here is uh, just a kit that, if I don't have a pack or anything else, I wanna go wandering around in the woods, or if 
something were to happen and I needed an emergency kit, this is my go-to. And this would be in your vehicle, in a bag? How would you, like, where would this be contained at? Well, I typically, I typically carry it in my, in my truck, okay. but when I go backpacking, I'll have this with me and mm -hmm. I can just take this. Okay when I want to go cruise around in the woods and just have some fun. Okay. And if some sort of emergency happened, then I'd at least have something with me. And right. Instead of one of those Altoid 10. Right. And this particular pouch uh, is, I used it, I used a pouch very similar to this uh, Desert Storm and as a sustainment pouch, I'd put food and a little bit of extra water, and occasionally a magazine, but... <clears throat> Mostly just food, because mm -hmm. you know, right. I know you you know humans can go for a long time without food, but that's other humans, not me. <laughs> <laughs> food is important. Yes, <laughs> that's a very important part of my survival is having some food. Now this is a Trango mess tin. And I believe it's based on the old German mess tins or the Swiss mess tins, something like that. Huh. Um, if you know, you can leave comments or whatever. And along with my tin, I keep a couple of extra items because I had the room. And a little fixed blade buck knife, which is uh, small, but it's handy. It's just big enough to you know, do some camp chores. It's sturdy enough. I can baton, like, kindling. And, uh, it, yeah, it'll take a great edge. So that is very sharp. And of course, I know you know how to sharpen knives, so yeah. you put a good edge on that. Yeah. But that actually feels really good in the hand. I put the cord on there. Yeah, that's a great add-on, too. A little bit of micro cord in case you need to tie something up. That's actually enough to enough core to make a ridge line if you had to. Mm -hmm. I think these are, is this the, uh, if I remember correctly, these are the Buck Pack Lights? Yes. Is the, the line? Buck pack Light. Pack Light. And okay. I think they still make them. Yeah, I think they do. Okay. Of course, I don't go anywhere without a spoon. Um, That's military training right there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I'm backpacking, always have a spoon in my pocket. Uh, if somebody else has food, there's a good chance I want a bite. <laughs> <laughs> Candling, that's one of the five C's. That's always a good thing to have a candle. This is just your plain old one inch emergency candle. And uh, it's always good to have an extra candle. Of course, everybody's got to have a space blanket. And I use this as a ground cloth. So it's a it's a, a water vapor be or a ba a Vapor barrier? Vapor barrier is what I was thinking of. Yeah. Between me and the ground because mm -hmm. I hate being wet. Yep. This is a prefixed ridge line that I can use with my SOL shelter. And this is like a space blanket, only heavy duty. Uh, it's called the Super Heat Sheets Heavy Duty Emergency Blanket. And this is an actual useful blanket mm -hmm. right and i use this one to make my shelter uh, it's got different types of setups that you can use it on the back oh nice and it fits in my little pouch and to open this part up i love these trying trying to trying however you say those these mestins this is the larger of the two and it's got the fold-out handle that you can cook on, boil your water, all that good stuff. And you can use this as a plate. You could probably fit like six or eight hot dogs in there, a piece of meat. <laughs> and I oh, wow. don't go anywhere without at least a little bit of coffee. These two coffee packets are uh, Cafe Bustello, and it's got cream and sugar already mixed in, which that's the way I like my coffee anyway, so I don't have to carry extra cream and sugar. And for the protein, I've got a little package of uh, white chicken, which goes excellent with my pack of soup, Lipton. It's just Lipton uh, chicken noodle soup. Um, I get the kind, personally, I get the kind with extra noodles because, you know, I like extra noodles. And... 
I carry a couple of protein bars. Uh, these only have six uh, grams of protein each, but they don't taste like cardboard and it's a little bit of chocolate too. So <laughs> that's a little treat. I carry a minimalist boo-boo kit. Um, I was a paramedic for 14 years, so I can do uh, a lot of stuff with just a little bit of equipment. Um, I got a couple of larger band-aids, a couple of small band band-aids, some um, uh, antibiotic ointment and a scalpel, and some alcohol prep pads. <clears throat> of course, a little bit of hand sanitizer to clean your hands before you start working on boo-boos is a good thing. And I have a little fishing kit, which has got uh, some swivels, some hooks, and a couple of weights. And along with my fishing kit, I've got about 200 feet, I think, if I count it right, of uh, braided fishing line on a bobbin. That's like uh, spider wire? Something like yes, that. actually, I think it is a spider wire brand. Okay, right. And then I've just got a little <clears throat> bit of tape around it to hold everything in place so I don't have fishing line everywhere. Right. And I have a little repair kit that's got some heavy duty thread that uh, it, this is the same kind of thread that they use in like heavy, heavy duty boots mm -hmm. to sew, sew the soles on. Yeah. Really strong stuff for repairs. Got a little bit of uh, copper wire in there, some safety pins, uh, some needles, and uh, a whole spool of dental floss, which in an emergency, and I wouldn't recommend it unless you can get to definitive care fairly quickly, but in an emergency, dental floss is in general clean enough to use for sutures if you had to. Mm -hmm. Not recommended, but better than nothing. Right. Uh, this is one of the hot water, hot beverage bags that come in the MREs, hmm. and uh, I used to save these when I was in in the army uh, <clears throat> over in Desert Storm. I'd save these, put you know nice clean water in it, and then I'd storm all over my truck because hmm. <laughs> you can't really carry enough water in the desert. Of course, I got a little fire kit, which has some uh, lifeboat matches, quick tenders, and a couple of uh, magic birthday candles that uh, relight if they get blown out. And I love these things. These are those little towels that you add a couple drops of water and they expand. Mm -hmm. Great for cleaning your pits and other things in your... Yeah. Your bottom? Yeah. <laughs> your butt. You can say bottom. You can say bottom. And we've got a little uh, ferro rod magnesium bar combo with a little piece of hacksaw to... Uh... So <clears throat> let me ask you about that real quick. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I know you've used these before. You've actually tested these. Oh, yeah. What's your opinion on that as a fire starter? Because I know a lot of people will grab those, um, and they're cheap ones that fall apart, and then there's good ones. Yes. The, the cheap ones, the, the ferro rod... Mm -hmm. Will come unglued, mm -hmm. and th that's just bad, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Um, and sometimes the ferro rod will will break as it comes loose, yeah. and now you're stuck with practically nothing. Yeah, right. And there is a difference between the quality of magnesium. Okay. Um, the good magnesium is a little bit lighter colored than this one. This mm -hmm. one's a fairly inexpensive one. Mm -hmm. You can get the hardware store. Yeah. But if I have to resort to this, then the things are looking bad anyway. I know I've used the actual military issue one, and that was actually decent. Yeah, that, that was that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So you can good. find those; those are great. And the thing is, uh, uh, where a lot of people make a mistake is they'll just you know scrape off a little tiny bit of mm -hmm. magnesium. Right. You need to get that at least as big around as a quarter. Yes. And as tall as your pinky is wide okay minimum and that's good there you go yeah excellent and you can always take any old piece of cotton cloth mm -hmm. and put a little vaseline on it 
In that cube. And make it, it's adorable. <laughs> it's the smallest vessel we can take. It is. It's just so tiny. <laughs> and that's a brand new one. Okay. And you can use it for lip balm and put yeah. on boo boos and alleys. It helps some blister prevention. Absolutely. And in an emergency, you can grease up your some of your weapon parts. Oh. I'm not going to get too far into that because everybody right. and their dog would get on there and say, hey, you can't do that. Right, right, right. <clears throat> and as a special treat, I got a little bit of beverage base. It's like Army Issue Kool-Aid. It's a uh, cranberry grape. Oh. Uh, the only thing I don't like about these is these are the sugar-free ones, which means it has artificial sweetener. And yeah. Me personally, my body doesn't doesn't do well with artificial sweeteners. Right. And I've got eight bouillon cubes. Okay. So you can drink just broth, or if you can <clears throat> take some game, nice to put in the water. You know, you got a mm -hmm. nice piece of a bird or critter in there, and you throw a couple of cubes in there, and you cook that up over the fire, and you've got a decent meal. Huh. Plus, the salt in there is a good electrolyte replacement. Speaking of saws, yeah. you can take a jigsaw blade, wrap a little bit of tape around it, and this is a sticky grip tape, uh -huh. and it's just enough to get a hold of to where you can cut small things. Right, right. You know, bones yeah. in, a, in a critter or a little branch or something. Absolutely. And for navigation, I carry a little silver trekker, which is one of my favorite compasses. Um, I have carried this particular compass on many search and rescue missions. Mm -hmm. And I love it because it's small, it's accurate, it's got adjustable declination, it's got the clear base plate, and it's it's easy for me to navigate with this compass. Yeah. I <clears throat> saw interrupt you. One thing on compasses. So you, you showed your Silva... I think I had mentioned that I, uh, I think I mentioned that I use a, a larger Silva Ranger um, yeah. in my kits. <clears throat> Silva compasses today are not the same Silva compasses no. that I'm talking about and that he's showing because the company changed hands. They went to China. The old Silvas were made in uh, Sweden. Sweden. Right. And they were good back when, in the day when we were buying them. Yeah. Now, if you order a Silva Compass, it is not the same company and they are not the same quality. I've heard no. a lot of issues with the new Rangers getting bubbles very quickly. Yeah. I've had this Compass since 1998. Right. There's no bubbles. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, it's made in like Sweden or something. Right, so if if you're gonna buy a new compass, I would suggest uh, Sunto MC2. Uh, yeah, um, Brunton makes very good compasses. So those are probably two most trusted brands. Anyway, sorry. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> and for another part of candling is a little uh, snap light, glow stick, chem light, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, I don't really trust those right. because if you've had them for more than you know. 20 minutes you, you can't you, there's no way to test it and see if it's still good yeah but it fit and you know if it works when i need it then that's great if it doesn't i've got a candle and some other things absolutely and i've got a mini bic i love these little mini bics because they fit anywhere mm -hmm. um i don't do the zip tie thing around it because i've i've never had an instance where it yeah i pushed it down and it leaked right but that's true Except for this one. <laughs> uh, but that's an old one. I've had that one for a long time. And, of course, I carry a Leatherman tool. This is the... T uh, I, you know, I don't know which one this is. This might be one of the original ones. That is the original one. Yeah. That is the original. Yeah, this I have, is the... I have that one, too. Yeah. The OG Leatherman tool. Yeah, those are nice. Which... Uh, I've had that for longer than I can remember. Actually, these are <clears throat> much lighter than the newer Leathermans, because newer Leathermans are, of course, way overbuilt. Yeah, they're really stout. These are very lightweight. <clears throat> but that's you know, strong sturdy. enough to oh, yeah. get her done. Absolutely. And uh, part of my navigation stuff and other things, uh, I carry a grid reader for my 1 to 24,000 USGS topo mm -hmm. maps. Mm -hmm inside my right in the rain uh, uh, 
little, it's a sample size right in a rain book that hmm. I got at the surplus store. But it's uh, it's got enough pages to take notes, you know, for navigation and things. Mm -hmm. And other notes, journaling or whatever you want to do. And it fits in here just nicely. And then I've got, as every kid should have, a Fresnel, Fresnel lens. Mm -hmm. Weigh nothing. Yeah, my way well nothing doesn't take up any space. Yeah. And I have, uh, uh, what brand is that? Aqua Tabs. These are for water purification. Mm -hmm. There's uh, 10 tabs here. And here's a nifty little thing. I'm not sure if you've seen these. These little rip things. Uh, rip pack. Mm -hmm. And. Um, it's like a little powder that you put in your mouth and swish it around and yeah. stick your finger in there and you know, right. it brushes your teeth. Really? Yeah. I've never heard of that. Rip Clean, rip clean Go. Uh, Rippack.com. Huh. That's where you get those. Okay. And they don't taste horrible. Interesting. And I keep a little piece of carborundum for sharpening blades and... Oh, okay. Touching up my hatchet, and my yeah. Now, along with this kit, of course, if I'm out and about, I'm gonna have a fixed blade on my hip. Yeah. And uh, frequently, I'll have a hatchet because I love my hatchet. Right. I, <clears throat> so that I'm just gonna interject real quick. So that's one thing I failed to mention on my smaller kit is I'm depending on the fact that I'm always gonna have a pocket knife. Yeah, if well, you, you do should. not, yeah, if you don't walk outside of your house and you don't have a pocket knife on you, there's Turn around. there's something seriously wrong. <laughs> so you better have a knife. Yep, along with my uh, dental floss and um, uh, fishing line, yeah. um, I've got a couple of needles. These are two different sizes, but because I don't see very well, especially up close or far away, they've got the really big. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. They got the. Give me that one. They got the really big eyes, oh, and yeah. it's it's much easier to thread. Right. And you could pick up like a handful of these over at Walmart for really cheap, and, like two bucks. So you and I discussed this before. There, in the bushcraft survival community, which is kind of funny. <laughs> there. Everybody thinks you have to have a sail needle. And sail needles are they're expensive. They tend to be yes. uh, huge. Huge. <laughs> and you and I have discussed this, and you actually had a good point on this, about why you carry those needles as opposed to a sail needle. Yeah, a sail needle is huge, and they're not as pointy as right. like these standard needles. Right. Because it's to go through sail cloth, exactly. which is heavy canvas. Right. If, if I have to suture you up because yeah. you fell down and got a bad cut, yeah. you're not going to want me to put that knitting needle through your skin. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is actually multi-purpose. You can actually sew clothing, mm -hmm. which for most of the clothing that you would typically wear, that's plenty good enough. That's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you're not sewing leather, and you're not typically and you're not going to be yeah. repairing your boots however with these needle these particular kind of needles and i can't remember the the brand name uh, i do use these for my leather craft stuff oh really yeah okay so, so you they're, can they're, they're yeah. capable yeah. Yeah. yeah they're very sturdy needles right, right. um <clears throat> and they will hold a point mm -hmm. very well but they're not that thick gauge like the sail needles are no yeah um I keep a a little spike to put on a stick to gig frogs and other critters or to make a trap. Mm -hmm. And I have an arrowhead that um, I forged years ago. Um, th this particular one is from a uh, cross-cut saw that was like two guys get on the saw. Yeah, yeah, right. It was like over 100 years old. Oh, wow. And it's like high carbon steel. And I've made other knives out of this chunk of steel and, and it holds an edge really well nice. um, this isn't like razor sharp but mm -hmm. I can make it that way if I want to right and I keep a Russian stove these come in the MREs for the the Russian uh, combat units hmm. and it's a little fold-up stove with three fuel tabs 
and these uh, great big matches. When you strike these, they will light and flare up. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so they, they'll they'll light these tabs really well, and you can also use them for fire. Starters. So then you can actually <clears throat> use the stove with your tin. Yeah. Yeah, that stove will and now you're fold cooking, that up. Cooking with cooking the, the food that you brought. Yep. Right. And making me some soup. Yep. And just in case like, I'm in a, a bad situation and I need to barter for something, uh, I carry four ounces of .999 fine silver bullion. And because uh, I can't afford gold. And this is much easier if I want to trade this. And mm -hmm. Right now, silver is... Uh, between 22 and 27 bucks for an, an ounce yeah so this is worth yeah, roughly 25 bucks okay so this would be a hundred dollars worth of silver if if i need to, if i'm starving i need to trade mm -hmm. this for a sandwich you know mm -hmm. keep from dying man that dog is going nuts <laughs> and last but not least, I carry one emergency cigarette because if I know I'm going to croak, I want to at least have one more smoke. <laughs> <laughs> well, comfort items are important. Yes, they are. And uh, that's about it. Wow. That, that's everything in my kit. Nice. Yeah. And every kit, you sh there should not be the exact same kit. There should never be a duplicate. Right. Like, I should not carry the exact same thing that you carry. Right. And vice versa. Because my skill sets and needs are going to be different than everybody else's. Yeah. And absolutely. so is everybody else. Yeah. All right, guys. That's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to thank my buddy Z for showing his kit and talking through his uh, process and sharing his knowledge with us. I think that was really cool. Hopefully, we'll be doing more videos where he's on camera and he can talk about some of his stuff. Um, please check out the uh, Prepared Wanderer Etsy site, uh, selling patches, stickers, other cool stuff like that. Shirt. Shirts. And then um, also uh, check out the Facebook group. Uh, that is growing. It's getting very huge and a lot of good information out there, a lot of fun stuff. Check out my Instagram, a lot of photos on there. Um, and all the affiliate links of, for the companies that I work with, who I trust and uh, get a lot of good stuff from. And we will see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer. Thanks for watching. Okay. <clears throat> hey, guy. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is what editing is for. <laughs> this is what editing is for. <laughs>